Why is this so hard to open? Oreos. I tried. I, it, it didn't even open right. <laughs> open after three minutes of messing with the package the oreos did you get the joke do you understand the joke please tell me someone got the joke or i am going to cry hey guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here hi my name is zaria smith and i typically make commentary videos just like this one so if you happen to like that you happen to dislike my gorgeous face you can go ahead and subscribe down below and hit the notification bell to get notified whenever i post which happens to be on every single wednesday um first oreo of the video um so today's i don't even know what that intro was so today's candle is watermelon margarita um and i don't know if you guys noticed but we have a new friend with us today um everyone everyone meet hezika hezika if you don't know has the ability called bungee gum which has the properties of both rubber and gum who would have thought? Now let's get on in today's video. So if any of you guys um, may know that I, in my life, have been referred to as an Oreo. Um, and recently there have been many videos talking about being an Oreo. The first video that I remember seeing was a couple months ago by Madison Brown, as we know, who is a, you know, we support her on this channel. And she made a video about being an Oreo. I left a comment on the video. <laughs> and some of the comments were a little bit aggressive, but definitely did not understand what I was trying to say. And I was like, as a person who is an Oreo, I appreciate when people talk about Oreos and the implications behind being called an Oreo for your entire life. But you know, who am I to have opinions on the internet? <laughs> but either way, I want to get into what is an Oreo for the first section of this video. I went on Urban Dictionary and I wanted to find definitions of Oreo because obviously I have the definitions that I have from when I was, you know, growing up and being called an Oreo. But um, I'm gonna read you guys two different definitions. The first one is term for African Americans that the black community is generally offended with for betraying their roots, usually for dating Caucasian girls, dressing too white, talking too white, etc. The term is branded Oreo since they're black on the outside and white on the inside. You know, I love having props for this video. This is amazing. Um, but you know, you see the typical Oreo, you see the black exterior, white interior. I should have gotten the double stuffed ones, but if I did that, then I would have eaten this entire tray and you know, don't want to do that. This is a longer definition and it is a stereotype that was created by blacks to be used for other blacks who are black on the outside, white on the inside. Black being their skin color and white meaning to display char characteristics of a white person, therefore betraying their black roots. Um, those characteristics being and not limited to raised in an environment that's not the projects, speaking proper English, very limited use of slang, having an eclectic taste in music, having a diverse group of friends, being well-educated, being legitimately employed, um, not abusing the welfare system, being well-mannered and civilized, saves money for college instead of bling and cheap grills and wearing nice clothes that are not rock aware or baby fat, Sean John and so on. Definitely flip those two, but yeah. So that's what an Oreo is. And from my understanding, an Oreo is someone who is blocked on the outside, water on the inside. Though I have seen many people who are light-skinned black people that have been called Oreos simply for being both black and white, um, or just lighter than the typical dark-skinned black person, um, which is, you know, let's not, you know, deal with that. But from my understanding and from me growing up, I was called an Oreo um, for looking black, but acting very, very white. And if you've been on my channel for, you know, more than three minutes, you would know that I am, some may say, well spoken um i have manners somewhat i don't talk in slang you can understand what i'm saying um i don't have a ghetto accent i don't act ghetto i don't have ghetto hairstyles um and i'm very you know suburbanized whitewashed black person um some may make the argument of that's what i am and that is basically what an oreo is next i'm gonna get into the chunk of the video which is my experience as an oreo um which hate calling myself that to be honest um i do think of it as a not i kind of i don't want to say slur but just like a term used to like hate on black people for simply just being themselves um so growing up 
I lived in a nice suburban little neighborhood in a upper middle class household. And I say upper middle class, but to some people that may seem differently, but I mean, we were comfortable. <laughs> my mom worked all day and my dad also had a job. We, I got most things that I asked for, very little, th like there is very few things in my life that I asked for that I didn't get, which most of the time was because I probably shouldn't have had it. Like I asked for an iPhone when I was like in third grade and I was told no, had a whole fit about it. Um, but I still did have a smartphone by the time I was in middle school. Um, very privileged life. Very unlike the life of many other Black Americans living in the U.S. Um, even not in the U.S., but on specifically like like the amount of like poverty that is in the U.S. Like honestly skews people's understanding of what is poor and what is rich. But all of that aside, um, I did not by any means grow up rich. Um, I wish I did. If I did grow up rich, then I wouldn't be <laughs> in the situation I am in right now. Um, but um, growing up in school, I originally went to a public school, got taken out of the public school, went to a private school for my fifth grade, eighth grade years, which I feel like was very, you know, prominent in my development. My mom says that I acted this way my entire life and it has nothing to do with the fact that I went to private school, but in my opinion, I went to private school, which was predominantly white. Um, there were a lot of Asian people and Indian people, but for the most part, I was surrounded by white people and trying to fit into some people on TikTok call it the trying to be white phase, but I wasn't trying to be white per se. I just wanted to fit in with the people that I was around, which I guess you can then say is being like Zaria. You wanted to be white. Um, and going to this school that was predominantly white, I was kind of, you know, put in a weird position because as a person of color in a place with predominantly white people, I found myself very ugly. People told me I was ugly to my face and made fun of me for being ugly, which to them ugly meant looking black. No hate to anybody they went to school with. We were all, you know, children. <laughs> so I have no hate towards you guys. But all that aside, I, you know, have a love for the academics. I love philosophy. I was literally in fifth grade going on YouTube and watching random philosophy videos and psychology videos. I just spit <laughs> everywhere. But I would, you know, I wanted a higher education. I used to want to be a um, pediatric neurosurgeon. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but that was my goal. I really wanted to be smart. How, oh, I, I guess I am smart, but the whole idea of being smart makes you not black i hate that you know thought process um but growing up that was just how i was um i drew, i went through an emo phase a one direction phase at the same time um i watched predominantly white youtubers and that wasn't necessarily by choice i just watched what was, it, what was ever on the trending page um i would watch you know just I, I didn't I didn't do typical black things. I helped my dad work on his car every now and then, but that pretty much was the extent of my blackness aside from like food and then going to visit my relatives that, you know, acted more black than I personally do. Um, fast forward to high school, still going through my emo and whatever phase. A lot of the black people that I went to school with, and again, no hate, we're all adults now, it literally does not matter. But um, a lot of the black people that I went to school with the more ghetto or hood ones, as others may describe it, um, did not like me. <laughs> um, there was specifically a time where, where a group of black girls actually disliked me a lot and would call me the black Peter Pan and make fun of me for acting white how I do. And some people would say that I wasn't really black and I was, you know, the exception to being black and people would be like, oh, I'm your friend. Um, but I don't really count as a black person and so many other things. And it was scary. Being invalidated for your own race is not fun and I don't recommend that for anybody. And it literally sucks that, like I have so many issues when it comes to making friends with black people, dating black people, doing anything in relation to black people because I was ostracized from my own race, my own community because of how I talked and how I dressed. And any person who's been through that, I'm so sorry I have to deal with that. That's traumatizing and that's something that I'm dealing with right now um, as we speak. Um, but being an Oreo was really difficult because I would be in AP classes or my dual enrollment classes and I would be the only black person, not the only black person, but very few black people were in my honors classes. And I remember specifically a person that I was friends with would say, well, since these black girls are bullying you, why don't you just go to honors or AP because they're not going to be smart enough to get into that class. Someone said that to me. I'm not going to say who, 
but someone did say that to me and that's honestly something that was stuck with me because like why is it that someone who's perceived as ghetto or black for that matter is hot cheetah girls and whatnot are seen as like dumb and like unintelligent like jackie Aina, i believe in a video says something about um how being ghetto was not a bad thing but when people use ghetto as something negative that's like completely different because honestly some ghetto styles are cool also if you think about it a lot of the popular styles right now like the y2k aesthetic is not the white y2k aesthetic it's the black ghetto fabulous hispanic styles that are getting popular right now that's for a reason just saying i now want to get into the concept of betraying other black people by assimilating into white culture um i say white culture but like what is white culture really i just i really just mean like assimilating into white people's you know vibes um now obviously there's a stereotype of uncle tom who allegedly um wanted to sacrifice himself to save his white master though there are some there are some arguments that that story is actually not true um but you know takes their own specifically i know of uncle ruckus <laughs> from boondocks if you don't know the video on the boondocks i love that show it is so funny uncle ruckus was a character who was black but he hated being black and said that he wasn't black and he had reverse vitiligo and how he would constantly make racist comments towards black people and say black people are horrible and all this stuff and black people suck boondocks in general is a great show if you want to watch it you know do that in your own leisurely time but it was the thing of like not wanting to be perceived as the other the other being the other black people there is a huge huge gap between the black people who grew up in poverty and grew up in you know harsh conditions mass incarceration horrible things happening and then the other black people who are wealthy black women or bougie black women or grew up in the suburbs black people there's like a huge disconnect i remember specifically going to visit my family um no hate to them you know we're cool or whatever but going to visit some people in my family and being told that like i'm white i was literally told that by one of my <laughs> by someone i was told that i was white or i didn't count as a black person or i wasn't really black yes this is true yes this really did happen i'm not lying though i wish i was but there's like this sense of like not wanting to be perceived as being ghetto. I've seen so many times of black people on the internet who try so hard to mask the fact that they are black. Obviously you want to fit in with people that you're around and it, it's this constant thing of like hey maybe let's think about the fact that a black person not being friends with other black people and they're like oh that's a sign that they're horrible or that's a sign that they suck. Um, Think about why they don't have any black friends because i haven't really met many black people that don't want black friends it's more so they have difficulty making black friends because of how they talk literally or how they you know go about themselves or even like i would get made fun of by black people for being emo or listening to panic at the disco you know so that's just something to think about um doing things that aren't traditionally black you know like i obviously listen to Kanye west is my favorite artist i love him to death though i do listen to other music other than like r&b and hip-hop and you know all that stuff you know um and I, I wrote in my notes i said being so far removed from black culture that you could ostracize from black people because it's like you don't fit in and it sucks being a black kid who was in theater being a black kid who was emo who loved anime um who was so far from the typical gangster ghetto thuggish type of person that wasn't me um at all which is fine <laughs> that shouldn't be the stereotype that all black people are like that in the first place but you know there's this sense of people feeling like you're not black because you don't act black and it's like you are acting black by simply being black i'm making a youtube video right now i'm a black person making a youtube video i am being black anything that i do is black instantly because i am doing it you know, so this concept of you're not black because of X, Y, Z, if the, the color of my skin is black, my ethnicity is black. Um, I, my ancestry is mostly black, though I, I'm like, I think like 10% white, <laughs> maybe 11, but like I'm black. So why do people say like, I'm not really black or I'm so well-spoken for a black girl or I've been told I'm well-spoken for being, you know, 19, but you know, that's another thing. Um, and lastly, I wanna touch on stereotypes. Stereotypes are wrong. 
the amount of hot Cheeto girls and Viners like Zayn and Heath who made fun of black women or rather black and Latina women really is what it is. Having the little towel over their head like with the long hair and like making themselves have big lips and all that stuff like doesn't that kind of seem like blackface? Just a little bit just a little bit but like making fun of black people for being black is crazy to me and there's so many stereotypes negative stereotypes and there's also something that i've noticed and that is people that are dark-skinned black versus people that are light-skinned black and i don't necessarily mean people that are white and black like mixed i also there are people that i know who have fully black parents and are light light lighter than me um so that's not what it is but it's interesting to see like a person who is light skin act ghetto and crazy versus a dark skinned black person who acts ghetto and crazy. And it, I know it's colorism. That's literally what it is. It's called colorism. Put definition on the screen, I guess, if you don't know what colorism is. But it's so interesting to me seeing how people like Rico Nasty are treated differently than Doja Cat or Rihanna treated differently than even, you know, Beyonce, who Beyonce is like brown skin, but like still it's interesting to me to think about and i could probably make a whole video on colorism there are so many videos on colorism in general but being a stereotypical black girl is not wrong the stereotype shouldn't exist in the first place but there's nothing wrong with being black doing what you want if you want long nails i wish i could have long nails but my job won't even let me um i do get pedicures all the time though um having your hair in a lace front i'm wearing lace front right now shocker i know no i'm kidding it's not there. but like you know or also like having your hair in braids here have your hair in braids do whatever you want with yourself like it has nothing to do with being ghetto acting ghetto if you want to talk with how you do talk how you do it's so stupid to me that there's this negative connotation with being black or being perceived as black or being perceived as ghetto like the fact that i don't even wear my natural hair right now because i'm scared of people perceiving me in a negative way or unprofessional which is still a thing or that's why i don't wear braids anymore well also because there's a like social situation that happened when i wore braids one time but there's such a negative connotation with being black and being a woman and sometimes people want to not be perceived as that um and there there are also some people who are white and want to piggyback off of being black which you know that's a thing in itself um but overall Stereotypes are bad. Don't follow stereotypes. Don't stereotype other people. Um, don't think negatively about a person just because they fit into the aesthetics of a stereotype. Being ghetto is not wrong by any means. Um, you know, we should focus more on like, you know, helping people if they want to be helped or, you know, thinking about why so many black people are poor. Think about the association of like, oh, being on welfare isn't like, having government assistant like, like having like medicaid like that scene is something that's so horrible and so wrong the programs are there for a reason in the first place but like why is it so many black people why is it so many black people like a negative you know press for having ebt cards but whenever a white college student has an ebt card it's like oh my god like get that back like take the government money like it's like what what's the disconnect here um but yeah i've been talking for 30 minutes so that's my video so let me know your opinions on you know oreos the cookie and then the stereotype i would like to know your genuine opinions on my channel i like to promote critical thinking so leave a comment down below but please don't be stupid <laughs> um but if you like my video make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really 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 helps small channels like mine make sure to also subscribe because i'm really close to hitting 4k um it's crazy because a year ago I hit 400 subscribers. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I hit 400 subscribers a year ago and that meant so much to me. I literally cried my eyes out. My mom, it, it was a whole thing and it would make so much, it would mean so much to me if I hit 4k around this time because I would be like a huge amount of growth. Um, and I appreciate you guys so much. So please subscribe um, for validation reasons. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. I have nothing else to say, but drink water, be safe get vaccinated you know because something you probably should do <laughs> um, but yeah make sure to stay happy and stay healthy and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye guys